Have you ever found that when you play your best golf, it really feels easy, don't it? Effortless, your swing feels rhythmical, but when you're not on form, your downswing feels a bit rushed, you feel uncoordinated, you feel like you're never gonna make consistent contact with your irons and maybe your driver and fairy woods. Well, this is the same for even the best players in the world, and they work on a couple of things to try to get this back, and you can work on them too. It's pretty straightforward. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get your swing beautifully flowing, and more importantly, just feel rhythmical, like almost your practice swing before you hit the shot feels. Now, before I get into the video, look, if you're new to the channel, for so your first lessons of mine, please consider subscribing. I release videos just like this one every single week to try and help you improve your game. Plus, you never have to remember a thing, I'll always put a free download or practice guide in the description box below. So I'm gonna give you three things today that I, my students absolutely love. Now, chances are you won't need them all, but you might need just a combination of one or two of them, but they really, really help. Now, the first thing, when you are feeling like it's easy and effortless, it feels like you've got so much time to swing through the shot, but it doesn't do that when you're not playing very, it feels rushed. So the first exercise I want you to play around with, and this is used by some of the best players in the world, like Tommy Fleetwood loves this exercise, and it's a nine to three exercise. All it is is this, you'll see here, when I'm swinging back, I'm getting my lead arm to about nine o'clock here, this is nine, and I'm swinging my, my trail arm here to three. But what do you notice also when I'm doing this? My arms here, my lead arm and my trail arm are remaining what? fairly straight. What do you notice about my wrist too? There's barely any wrist set in this situation here. Now why is that? Why are the players working on this exercise as a way to really help them coordinate and improve the consistency of their strike? Because it gives them time. You see, most of the amateurs that come and see me, and you might be the same, is, is they do so much on the backswing, like bend their arms excessively on the way back here. They get lots of wrist hinge on the way back here. And the problem with all of this unwanted movement here where, where you get all gets flat and you get very narrow, you've got to then in quarter of a second, get rid of all that. Because the impact, your arms need to be straightening here. Now, but if you're all flexed, you've got a quarter of a second to somehow get rid of it. If you do get rid of it, the chances are you're gonna throw it violently here, so all the power's gone there. So by the time you get to the golf ball, you're kind of in this flicky, horrible, weak position. So what I want you to work on is this. Give yourself more time by making the swing where my lead arm and my trail arm here, look, are helping form a beautiful circle. But look at this, there's a softness to my trail arm, yes, but I haven't got excessive wrist tension. In fact, I've left them there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine now swinging to three o'clock and achieving exactly the same thing, okay? That is the first thing I want you to work on. Literally from here, make a movement, imagine your both arms here are staying fairly close together and we're going to keep them straight including the wrists here we're going to swing to nine o'clock and then on the way through i'm going to imagine putting the club head in somebody's hands in front of me here to three o'clock okay i'll show you how we can add some speed and rhythm to this in a second but that is the first thing i want you to kind of rehearse let's have a look at this in action So that's what I'd love you to start with initially. Really kind of get, imagine that circle, looking after that circle here with very little wrist hinge and keeping those arms fairly straight all the way back and all the way through. Create a beautiful consistency. The less that you do on the way back, the more time you have, right? The less you have to do on the way down. Now, the silly thing about this is if I ask you to pick up, I've got my big heavy camera bag here. If I ask you to pick up something heavy, Right, this moves on to tip number two. If you've got something heavy in your hands and I ask you to throw, you wouldn't gonna go lift up here, bend your arms, would you? Notice what's happening if I threw something here. My arms naturally, because it's heavy, extend away from me here in a straight line. What else do you notice? I'll show you from this side. If I throw this way, what do you notice about my backside? What's happening if I throw this way? I am naturally creating, look, a pivot. Now, this is huge, particularly again if you're lacking power. You need to get your body pivoting as well. Now, because of the golf club's super, super light, it's just easy just to lift it up and do stuff with it. If it was heavy, you would be forced to kind of 
swing those, that move this body in such a way to throw it, right? So you could imagine here that your club weighs a ton. And then what I want you to do is this. Imagine your trail pocket creating this pivot so that you can throw the arms this way. Okay, where's my trail pocket moving? Towards my target. This is again, if it unlocks the torso, it unlocks the shoulders and he's giving you a much better turn. Unlocking more turn gives you what? More time, more time in the downswing to make and produce that strike. If it's locked in place, your arms start to kind of force to kind of lift up to try and complete the swing. You don't have any time. And hey Presto, you have to kind of find that impact in a quarter of a second. It's very, very hard to do. So let's combine the two together now. Imagine you've got this heavy golf club. You're throwing that golf club away. You're literally allowing those arms to straight, uh, stretch away from you here. You're making that pivot back. And then from here, look, all I'm gonna do is flow, look, through the impact position here to three o'clock. Turn up towards the target and away we go. Let's have a look at this. That's beautiful. So I feel this as well myself and, and hopefully you can see this year when you're watching is, We've got, and we're looking after this beautiful circle here. We're creating the length of the circle and giving ourselves more time by allowing that trail pocket to move towards the target. This unlocks the turn and allows you to continue look, keeping those arms fairly straight. The lack of wrist ins here is super, super important. The more you bend those wrists, the more you cut that, the more the face starts to open. If those wrists here are a bit more this way, you're actually having the club face much, much more close. This gives it a better chance of hitting those straight shots. If you start to flex those wrists too much, the face starts to open. And again, you've got to somehow close it on the way down, making it super, super difficult. Now, I've got a bonus hit coming towards the end, so please stay tuned, it's an absolute belter. But let's just move, just to kind of clarify, let's move on to step number three. Again, simple, something simple you can take straight to the course. Now, let's combine this. You imagine we're throwing this heavy golf club here, this is a sensation. Where are my ears? What's my head doing? It's moving, isn't it? Yep. Where are my ears? They're pointing towards the ground on the way back and on the way through if we're throwing it here. This is a great image for you, yeah? Just imagine ultimately pouring water out of both ears on the way back and on the way through. So on the way back, I'm gonna pour water on my lead ear here and then on the way through, I'm gonna pour water at my trail here. This here now is helping me create this beautiful circle backwards and forwards. And again, it's giving me more time. If I stay static with my head here, this is when people are looking at the golf ball for too long, don't look at the ball. Ultimately here, look, you get static, your arms start to bend and what happens? We get that horrible position we talked about earlier. So allow the head to move. You can still keep your eye on the ball, but I'm allowing my head to move this way and then on the way through move through, okay? You'll see a lot of great players, Henrik Stenson, Annika Sorenstam, a lot of the guys doing this. So, pour water out of both ears. Beautiful, okay, so, bonus, I promise you a bonus tip. Now this is really, really massive. So when people are working on stuff like this, and you might be doing the same, Sometimes you can feel wooden. You know, I often imagine trying to keep things fairly straight. Straight's a word that makes you feel tense sometimes. So I don't want you to do that. So I want you to go onto YouTube, watch TV, watch the best players and look at their rhythm. I'm gonna show you this. This is a beautiful uh, uh, feeling. You can, in fact, you can do this with me now. It'd be amazing. Just grab a golf club. Just pick it up like this. Swing it. Now at this stage, you don't see any good players just doing this. What you will see is whoosh whoosh i often i often put audio to this look at this one and two one and two and there's a whoosh impact so i want you to connect with the rhythm of this motion so you're imagining this circle you're reducing the amount of bend going on here you're imagining this nine to three position but it's not just one even pace and some wooden machine there's a rhythm to this See if you can spot it in my swing. One and two, one and two. Can you see the buildup of speed? There's a rhythm to that. It isn't, you follow? And this is really, really important. So get a sense of that. Either use it through imagery, you know, how often have you seen great players and after you've watched them, it rubs off on your game. That's because you're almost picking up subconsciously the rhythm of their players. 
If you're more auditory, one and two can really help, okay? So look at this here. I'm actually gonna use an auditory cue here. One, I'm gonna do nine to three. One and two, okay? So look at this in action. One and two. Beautiful, okay? One and two. Let's build these images and feelings into your game and it will give you so much more time and you'll stop rushing that downswing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with one of your friends who's struggling a little bit. And of course, look, I put a download or practice guide in the description box below where it all happens. You get the chance to post your swings, get involved in the, in the community. And hopefully for me, I'm gonna jump in and help you out too, all for completely free. So do that if you can now. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, press that subscribe button and the bell. And if you want to see how this specifically works with woods off the ground, do this right here. Press this button right here. Until next week, have a wonderful golfing week.